time for Cigar Talk, the fastest growing cigar show in the nation. Whether you're a new cigar enthusiast or a cigar aficionado, we have something for everyone. Bringing you the best interviews, cigar reviews, and weekly giveaways. So grab yourself a cigar. It's time to light them up. Welcome back to Cigar Talk. I'm your host, Rob Jones. We're in the studio. We have co-host with us today, Bryant Falconer. How you doing today, Bryant? Man, I'm doing good. Doing good. Awesome, man. So uh, we got a few different things coming up on the show a little bit later. We got a great interview with Ben Holt. And if you don't know who Ben is, he's a uh, rep for the Black Label Cigar Company. And he's also coming out with a new cigar line I am super excited about. Uh, we'll be talking about a few other things throughout the show. But right now, let's talk about what we're smoking. Today I'm smoking a McAuliffe medallion. Oh, dude, I've been smoking those lately. <laughs> I can't get away from them. Yeah, uh, for the last a, few days, they've just been everything that's on my mind. Man, it's just a great smoke. Yeah. Uh, be looking for that one real soon on something. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to say anything else. I'll, yeah. I'll cut it short. Anyway. Because yeah, those are uh, hints, man. It's yeah. just perfect with it. Nice structure. And I'm you're ready. using, I see you're using a punch. Yes. So what, what, what? What struck you about starting using a punch more? Because I didn't the draw. Think, yeah, but uh, you were using your uh, uh, Zycar XO, yeah. and that has a great draw. It has a great draw, but this one I'm getting it's more to me. It just tastes better because you have the full cap. Yeah, full cap. Yes, sir. See, I'm not a I'm not a punch guy. Although uh, I was up at the shop a few maybe a week or two ago, uh -huh. and Nathan had a punch. That was like as big as your thumb. Oh. I mean, and it, it takes almost the whole tip off, but is perfectly round. And if I had a punch like that, I would use it. That's, That's too large. small for me That's because large. I don't like having to uh, put that much effort into getting a good puff. But I'm not get, putting that much effort into it. I'm, I'm actually getting a great draw off of this McAuliffe. I really am. I'd like to get more smoke. <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is you got going on i want more you want more that's right so anyway i'm also smoking a mccallough cigar uh, i'm smoking the leanda number two fantastic smoke uh comes in its own coffin uh, yes. and you know what's so funny about that is i gave one of those to uh, paul <laughs> and uh, i went outside and he came out there and he was like, man, that was hard as hell to get out of the box. <laughs> and I was like, did you slide the end of it off? And he was like, oh, I didn't know you did that. Yeah. So if you're prying it out of the box, you're doing it wrong. That's, that happened to me the first time oh, I tried that's it. That's hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, it's a great smoke. Uh, man, and I, I started smoking before the show, so I'm already halfway through the cigar. Yeah, and so I'm probably going to have to light one up before we start the next uh, segment. Anyway, uh, a little trivia here. We had a uh, question sent in from a listener of where did the term close but no cigar come from? So I actually had to Google this. Uh, <laughs> I, I had no idea. I've heard it all my life, yeah. but I didn't really know where it had come from. But apparently back in the 30s at the carnivals, uh, in the 40s, I guess, as well, but guys would, like, throw baseballs at Target's I guess like the milk jugs. Yeah. And uh, I guess, what do, you, what do you call them back then? Not jugs, but the uh, the pints. Milk pints, the pints of milk, or yeah. Or quarts or mm -hmm. whatever it was. But anyway, they would stack them up and throw them. And if a guy got like two out of the three, the prize was a cigar. Mm -hmm. And the carnival guy would say, close, they, but no cigar. Yeah, if they missed. <laughs> right. That's cool. That's and cool. so uh, I actually, when I Googled it, I found the whole article about it. And it was talking about all different sports throughout time. Okay. And one of the ones that I recognized was in 2011. Texas Rangers oh, was those one cardinals. strike those away, cardinals. one Close. strike away, but no cigar. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> we walked away with our 11th World Series uh, uh, trophy. Hey, and I'll tell you, just so you guys know, Bryant's wearing a Cardinals cap yeah, today. It's because I am a Cardinals fan. I bleed red for another reason. Hey, well, <laughs> you know, I, I I used to be a Cardinal fan yeah. when I lived in St. Louis because I love going to the games. You couldn't be nothing but. <laughs> true, true. When you're in St. Louis, man, Ooh. those guys don't mess around. No. Because here's the thing. Anheuser-Busch owns everything. Yes, yes. And so I remember when we moved up there, me and a buddy of mine, Tim Rickman, 
And uh, we went into a bar and we asked for, uh, I, I believe it was a uh, Coors. <laughs> and they were like, what? A uh, what? And I said, uh, a Coors, Coors Light, whichever one you got. And they were like, we don't serve that nope, here. You get a Bud, Bud Light, Michelob, <laughs> any Bush, Bud, pro- Bush any, any, yeah. any AB product you can get. And it was crazy because yeah. I was like, the whole bar only <laughs> sells Anheuser Busch yeah. product, which was great because I actually became a Budweiser Weiser fan. fan. <laughs> and who before we moved up there, I would have never drank Budweiser. <laughs> so I was, you know, the other cool thing was they sold beer across the line, state line, yes, sir. 24-7. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we could get they off act- work late. They actually stopped in St. Louis at 1 o'clock. And everybody would come to Illinois to get it because it was 24 hours. It was the same way with the clubs. And in St. Louis, uh, they didn't sell beer Be- on Sundays, Sundays yep. but across the state hey, line, Illinois, seven days a week. Sin City for real. Right. <laughs> so that was uh, interesting, especially because I was 21, <laughs> Tim was 22. So Man. You could, you could drink all you want. Oh, yeah. When you want, where you want. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. So. Let's talk about our sponsor right now. Yes, sir. While we have the opportunity. Uh, McAuliffe Cigars is our sponsor. You guys know that. We love McAuliffe Cigars. We're both smoking them right now. Yeah. And uh, they have a a really big line of cigars. Uh, We're real big fans of all the ones I've smoked so far. I believe there's about 16 or 17 different cigars. And I think I've smoked about 10 of them. Uh, it's I've a had large selection. Yeah, yeah, it's real large selection, and I've smoked all of the uh, bold line. I can believe that, and uh, also <laughs> the Connecticut. You know, I love that oh, one. Oh yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, a little bit later in the show, we'll uh, talk about McAuliffe again. If you guys are interested in joining their uh, McAuliffe Ambassador Program, really cool. You get a medallion with uh, their uh, logo on it, but it also has your personal number. And we're not going to talk about what <laughs> number we are again. We know you got a lower number than me. Yes, sir. One fifty six two ninety eight. Tell the truth. But I also kind of was thinking, you know. It's kind of like a bowling score. No. You're 156. No. I'm 298. No. It's a golf score. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you know that? That would actually be probably about right because on a round of 18, 298 yeah. would be pretty close for me. Uh, actually, we were talk- I was talking in the shop the other day with uh, San Diego Jack. Yes, sir. Junior. Junior. And he says he plays golf. Yes. Do you play golf? I used to. I played in the Army. I started in the Army, well, and I played have, afterwards. Do you have clubs? I had uh, my last set of clubs I got rid of three years ago. Well, I was going to say we could all go play golf someday. I need to get another set, though. Well, I really do. Go get a set of golf yeah. clubs, and we'll go. Well, you know what? We'll ride around in the golf cart and smoke cigars. <laughs> so, go smoke cigars and smoke uh, and drink some uh, beer. <laughs> yeah, or some bourbon. Yeah. Take some Buffalo Trace. Jeez. Take some E.H. Taylor. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, and I've been looking at some other bourbons online and doing a little research. I think next week I'm going to surprise you. Okay. I, I got one I've been really looking at, and I'm thinking this is the one that we may want to bring on the show okay. and really test it out. I've heard a lot of good things about it. I'm not going to tell you what it is because right. I want to make sure I can get it first. <laughs> I don't want to get your hopes up and, and then, then crush your dreams. <sighs> a little bit later in the show, like I said, we're going to have uh, Ben Holtz from Black Label Cigars. Man, I don't even want to talk about it because... We'll get to that in a little bit. I am jealous. So, and everybody knows that this week is IPCPR. Yes, sir. And everybody that I know is in Vegas yes. or going to Vegas. Or going, yeah. And I got to tell you, I'm really disappointed we're not in Vegas for this. <laughs> but you know what? Next next year, we have to be. We're going. Yeah, we have to I be. I already told my wife. Uh, my wife said, that's cool. She's going to go with me. Okay. You got to go. Bring your wife. No. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Hey, bring Matthew. <laughs> no again. <laughs> Matthew, you got solo, stood up. Solo dolo. Hey, how about Paul? No. Phil. He, he Phil. 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 Never. <laughs> <laughs> no, Paul Paul would maybe go. He he'd probably already be there, there right? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, uh one of in fact the guest that we have on our show today. 
actually drove or is in the process of driving mm-hmm. to Vegas from Waco, Texas. I thought that was cool because he's driving the first day out to like Albuquerque, uh-huh. the next day out to like Scottsdale, okay. and then the last day to it's Vegas. Vegas. Okay. So I was like, that's a cool way to break it up. Hopefully you can find some cool shops to go visit while you're out there. Yeah. Did you know, maybe you do already, but uh, Scottsdale or Flagstaff or Phoenix is the third largest cigar smoking community yeah. in the nation. And I think it's Phoenix. Is it Phoenix? I think it's Phoenix. Well, all I can tell you is those old guys out there yes, are smoking are some smoking cigars. Some cigars, yes, sir. Yes, Man, sir. And I, I've never really thought about moving out to Phoenix when I retire because Texas. It's the same dry heat. Well, you know, but they don't get the winter like no, we get. No, no. But. Our winters aren't that bad. But you know what? I haven't spent a lot of time. All I know is I don't want to be in Phoenix in July. <laughs> I've been there, done that. I'll tell you, what, I went out there one year, and it was in July, and it was 121. And let me tell you, you know, when I got back to Texas, people were like, oh, but it's a dry heat. Dude, it's, it's hot. hot. It's hot. Yeah. You get out of the car, you feel like you're in an oven. Yes. And I was like, I don't care if it's a dry heat, wet heat, whatever. It's heat. I was in Albuquerque in, what was that, March one year. And I actually went there for the VA. And leaving out, they said that it was a snowstorm coming. And they were going to shut the city down. In now, Albuquerque? Was, yes. You talking about somebody had that Denali running? <laughs> I got out of got back to got back to Texas and it was eighty five degrees. Nice. <laughs> I'm like, really? <laughs> I come from New Mexico in the snow hey. to to Texas in the heat. I was right? like, yeah, I take Texas. <laughs> well, let me tell you a funny story about when I was in New Mexico. I was a, a photographer and it was me and another guy and we were actually shooting a church directory somewhere on the other side of the mountains. Mm-hmm. So we had like got up at like five in the morning, went up to the church and set up the photography equipment and worked from like 730 in the morning until nine o'clock at night. Wow. I mean, just people, people yeah. all day yeah. long. And so we loaded up all of our equipment and we were we were we were very poor. We were very I broke. Understand. <laughs> and so we weren't going to get a room that night. We we're like, we'll just drive all the way back to mm-hmm. Texas. So we're driving back, and I mean, both of us are just dead tired. And I want to say about 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, we didn't have cell phones back then okay. either. So I honked at him. He pulled over. I said, hey, man, let's take a nap. Yeah. And so he parks. I parked right behind him. We both turned our flashers on, and I don't know how long I was asleep, but I woke up, and when I woke up, I saw this car in front of me with lights flashing and I thought I was going to hit it. So I started jamming on the brake over and over and over and the car wouldn't stop. And I started blowing the horn because I thought I'm about to hit someone. Dude wakes up, starts his car and drives off and leaves me there. You had some peyote. <laughs> no, man. I was just exhausted. He was in the mountains, peyote. Driving. <laughs> hey, well, I'll tell you this. I did the same thing once, driving uh-huh. from Phoenix all the way back to Lubbock. Ooh. And I didn't get a hotel. And then, this time I was by myself. And I drove all night. And I got, you know where Littlefield, Texas yes, is? Yes, I do. I got to Littlefield, and the sun was just coming up. And I just could not make it any further. I had, had to, to pull over yeah. and take a little nap. I pulled over on the side of the highway and slept eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you took a nap already. <laughs> I woke up and was like, holy crap, it's almost nighttime. <laughs> Again. <laughs> right. So, you oh, know. Oh, man. Those, those were the days. You know, when you were 19. Oh, I could drive forever. You, yeah, ever. you could drive forever. And, yeah. and you know what? You were making money, but you weren't making enough money to where you could actually, you know, get a room. I flew home from Fort Lewis, Seattle, to St. Louis to pick up my car. Because I just went to Fort Lewis and it was my first permanent party. So it's a two and a half day drive back. 20 years old. I made it in two days. Wow. Took 12 hours off of it. But my funny story was in uh, Missoula, Montana. I think that's where it was. I got there and it was dark. I was like you. I was like, man, I can't make it any farther. I can't do it. So I'm cheap. I'm not going to pay for a room. I pulled in the hotel's parking lot, parked, 
went to sleep. And I say I got there around about 10 or 11. I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and all I saw was this huge M on the side of a mountain. I got scared. <laughs> I'm like, where in the heck am I? What is going? What is that M? What is that M? And I started looking around. I'm like, where am I? I had forgot that I had pulled in there and went to sleep. Next thing I know, I see a huge M. And I'm like, what is this? I started the car, drove off, made it. That's part of the reason I made it into uh, Seattle in two days because I was scared. I get there and I ask my first sergeant about it. He said, dummy, he said, that's in the mountain. They put that in there. I was like, but it was glowing. He said, it's supposed to glow at night. And I looked at him. He just looked at me like, you about the dumbest. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I've never seen it. First of all, I'm from St. Louis. I, East St. Louis, I've never seen mountains. We ain't got before. no mountains yeah. in East St. Louis. The only yeah. we had a taller buildings. So right. I'm like, what is, and then you went up there and carved that in there and lit it? Oh, come on. You need, you now, where, need was, a, where was that at? I think it was Missoula, Montana. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I I don't, I've never seen that. But see, I loved it because Montana doesn't have a speed limit mm. in the daylight. Oh, I had an 86 Chevy Caprice. Everything that was in it, I did. You were flying. <laughs> oh, brother, please. 20 years old. You know, we thought we could live forever. So. You know, whenever, well, I wasn't 20. I was 19. I had a 1972 Chevelle. Blessed. And you've seen that uh, baby blue yes. with a white vinyl top. You know I'm a classic Dude, car guy. That uh, car was my dream car. Oh, anyway, uh, anyway let's get on with the show. <laughs> For real. <clears throat> so anyway, guys, I uh, want to remind you to go buy uh, Cigar Rights of America. Make mm-hmm. sure you uh, sign up. And if you don't sign up, you can still visit a link to your state to send an automatic letter to your senator and congressman. Make sure that we're doing, taking care of, uh, you know, preserving this way of life that we have. Uh, man, I, I just don't know what I would do because you guys know we love the community. It's it's part of our life. It Everything, is, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't go as far to say it is my life, but nah. it's pretty darn close. Yeah. Uh, just the amount of people that I meet through the cigar community, you know, it just – makes life worth living yeah the amount of great people you meet you know the great conversations the uh connections you make through the cigar uh, community the brick and mortar sitting there talking and finding out you know this person works here this person works there this person knows this person i know this you know we come together and it's like okay so and so needs this oh i can help with that yeah, you exactly. <laughs> yeah, just just look at Junior. Yeah, oh, yes. I mean, that's a great example. Yes, Junior yes. finds a job without even looking for one. When it wasn't looking. Right. So, and it just fell in his lap. <laughs> and so, I mean, that's, that's the great thing about the community. Uh, I'll also say this. Last Sunday, Paul had some people over, and uh, they were cooking steaks. I took my own steak, cooked it. Oh, man, it was so – it was a, it was a ribeye steak that uh some fans of the show sent me mm. and it's all grass-fed natural beef holy moly it was good now don't start crying it was no, in question. my freezer for like weeks question go ahead Fan, friends of the show you okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah you, know, <laughs> you know well really this was before you were on okay i got and you. uh anyway yeah, man you they think of having it <laughs> No, no, dude, I'm not lying to you. It was like this big. It was two inches thick, and it was about that big, and I ate every steak. In fact, I picked up the bone and kind of gnawed gnawed on it a little bit. You did the Fred Flintstone. Yeah, so uh, these guys that do that beef, they're going to be doing, you know, uh, sales. Mm. So if you're interested in some amazing Texas grass-feed beef, uh, beef uh hit me up and i will get you their contact information uh i don't know it off the top of my head but all i can tell you is man it was amazing anyway uh i was gonna talk about something else right quick but you know what let's go ahead and get to the break yes sir and we'll come back with uh ben holtz from black label cigars so stick with us guys don't go anywhere we'll be right back <laughs> Hey, welcome back, Cigar Talk. Uh, thanks for sticking with us through the break, guys. We have a special guest with us today, Ben Holt, and uh, he's uh, coming out with a new cigar line. 
dissidents. Dissident cigars, yeah. And uh, so anyway, how you doing today, Ben? Doing good, doing good. Man, we appreciate you coming by the studio on your way to Las Vegas, uh, stopping off in Abilene, Texas, and you're coming from Waco. Yes, sir. Cool, man. So let's get let's just dive right in. Uh, what are we smoking? Tell us about that. Well, uh, you're smoking the uh, home. That's going to be a limited release. I am uh, going to be releasing at the show. It comes in one size, a box press Toro barber pole with the uh, Ecuadorian Maduro wrapper and Corojo. The filler is 100% Esteli tobacco. I'm smoking uh, the new soap box that I'll be uh, showcasing at the show as well, too. Uh, Brazilian wrapper, Ecuadorian binder, and uh, Nicaraguan. Man, color. that sounds like a good sandwich right there. Yes, sir. Man, and I'm telling you, I've never uh, had one quite like this. This is a barber pole. But it's not like any other barber pole I've seen before. It's dark on dark. You know, usually they throw in like a real light shade leaf. And it's a beautiful stick. And I tell you what, uh, I cut it and did a cold draw before the show. And it was fantastic. You know, I always judge a cigar by its cold draw. Making sure that it has a good draw. But then right off the bat, I did a retro hell. And I was like, oh yeah, that's something special right there. So good job, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. So let's talk about how you got into the cigar industry. Okay, yeah. You've been, you told me you've been in for about six years? Yeah, six, seven years now. Um, I, got, I got in, uh, I was always a cigar nerd. I mean, I got, I got into cigars when I was in the Marine Corps. Um, oh, well, thank you for your service. Oh, I didn't know you. you were in the Marines. Yeah, yeah, I was deployed to Iraq, and that's kind of where I started smoking cigars. You know, we would sit around the smoke pit and have a cigar to decompress after, uh, you know, doing our patrols and stuff like that. And um, then uh, when I got out, I went to college, and on my way to class every day, I would pass a cigar shop in McGregor, Texas, and stop in and get some cigars, and they had a Help Wanted sign, so I figured, you know, part-time gig, and go in there and, you know. That was at TJ's? That was at TJ Cigar Lounge, Very McGregor, nice. Texas. And it kind of just snowballed from there. I got, uh, got to know James and Angela and Stephanie with Black Label very well, and they needed a rep, so I threw my name in the hat and... Yeah, six years later, I'm still doing it. So. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, and we talked earlier, you've been down to Nicaragua. Yes, sir. Many yes, sir. times. Yes, sir. So how's that? Uh, it's great, man. It's an awesome place. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people have this kind of misconception about the place. Uh, um, you know, a lot of people are, it's a Central American country. Some people think it's unstable and everything, but it's a, it's an awesome, it's a good place to go to, to learn about all kinds of things. Cigars, coffee, it's a great vacation spot. Esteli is a, a very gritty town. It's a, it's a working class town. Uh, all revolves around tobacco. Um, it, I love it there. How's uh, the coffee there? Coffee is delicious. I mean, is there any better coffee you've had? I mean, it sounds to me like it'd be badass. It is. Uh, it's, it's, it's probably my. There's this one place uh, called Selva Negra up in the Mola Gulpa region of Nicaragua that every time I go down there, I always come back with a bag of coffee from them. Nice. Um, and it's delicious. Oh, sounds heavenly, man. So. Let's get back to, you've been in the business for six years, and this year you're coming out with your own line of cigars. Yes, uh, Dissident Cigars. I, I bought the brand, if some people who know a little bit about Dissident, it was a brand that was in the market uh, a little bit, about three years ago or more. Um, it kind of went defunct, um, and then I, I pursued them uh, last year and uh, wanted to bring it back, bring it back to the market, which is kind of a new touch, a new spin. Uh, my touch on it. Nice. Um, so, what kind of cigars was it before? They they had three. They had soapbox block and home wasn't. They were tending to release home, but they didn't get to do it. And there were there were more medium bodied sticks. So, what's your plan? I want to get back a little bit to the fundamentals of cigar making. Um, I think, and you know, there's, some people might take issue with what I'm about to say, but th- it, I think there's a lot of complacency and that's has taken place in in the industry. Um, especially on the boutique side of things. And I think, you know, I think boutique cigars, the, the term has just become like a marketing term more than anything else. It used to mean something. There was right. something that was associated with the it. Quality. Yeah. Um, and I want to get back to that a little bit, you know, and, and focus more on the, the t- you know, the quality of tobacco that we use at Ovea Negra, our, our, the factory down in Nicaragua. You know, it's, it, they use nothing but grade A quality tobacco and, I wanted to use my own little touch um, and and blend some unique, what I think are unique cigars that aren't necessarily you can be you know found throughout the industry. So I got to ask you, who blended this cigar? Me and James Brown. Nice, because I'm not going to say this just because you're here, dude. This is a good cigar. Thank you. Very good cigar. I'm impressed, and uh, I'm not easily impressed. I <laughs> smoke on average six to eight cigars a day, and my palate's all over the place, 
this is a quality cigar and I guarantee you I'll do whatever it takes to get it in the shop here because this is amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah, I went when I went down, I already had in mind kind of what I wanted to do with my blends. I had some tobaccos I wanted to concentrate on um, that I thought, you know, that spoke to me that I really enjoyed and really liked. So I went down there, like I said, with, with an idea, and me and James started playing with some tobaccos and uh, putting those, those, started utilizing and focusing a little bit around those that I had in mind, and they came out fantastic. Well, I've done about three retro hills on this, and normally I only do like one on a cigar, maybe two. I've done three, and I'm not even in the first third, and it's only because it's so delicious. I can't imagine it being any better than that, man. That's great. I'm a guy. I'm a, I'm a sucker for a good retro hail. Oh, yeah. Well, you knock it out of the park with that one for sure. Uh, so how did it come about that you decided to do your own line of cigars? Um. It, it was out of frustration, I think, you know, seeing some of the stuff I was seeing in, in the industry and some of the approaches that some people were, I just, I didn't like it, you know. Um, I wanted to, you know, take my experience and learn from those lessons of those who went before me a little bit and, and kind of, you know, put my spin on it and what my take on what I think a boutique cigar should be. Well, I tell you, to me, when I see a boutique cigar, my expectations are pretty high because it is a boutique and in my opinion they're gonna have better quality control and so when i pick up a boutique stick that's not like close to perfection i know it's not fair because nobody expects perfection out of the big boys but when i get a boutique cigar and it's plugged or it just burns horribly i'm like oh man i just had such high hopes is that what you're doing is like making it as good as possible to where when someone picks it up, they're like, yeah, that's a quality boutique. Exactly. Um, what, what a lot of people don't understand and don't know about the industry is that some of these, you know, boutique companies, um, they've kind of, I think they've kind of gotten away a little bit from putting their hands in the process. You know, a lot of them are just paying a big mega factory to make a cigar for them and they're not really educated on what the process is. And sometimes what happens is that big factory is going to put some lower quality tobacco in that cigar and it's not going to be the cigar that they intended it to be, but they're not educated enough. Or they're not hands-on and enough. They're, and they're not hands-on enough to maintain that quality and that integrity that, that they that they uh, wanted to. Yeah, and I've seen that happen where I've smoked boutiques before and they were fantastic and I loved them. And then when I go back to that same cigar, might be, you know, six months later, it's like that's that doesn't remind me of the cigar and not that i remember the flavor profile over six months but i remember it in my mind thinking that was a great cigar and i go back and i'm like disappointed you know what i mean yep and so i can see where that happens and i think a big part of it is and this is your warning when you're successful don't just start getting the big head about being successful and taking your hands out of the product because we see that over and over guys really rocket launch up to the top and they start getting you know pretty famous and it goes to their head and they take their hands out of the product and the next thing you know you're getting cigars that didn't isn't what got you there exactly and and i don't want to i don't want to be that guy um it's not my approach it's not my mentality it's not our mentality at ovea negra you know james moved down to Nicaragua to open up a factory and his whole mentality around the factory is to produce quality cigars and he did it because a big factory in the past wasn't doing us right so he had his hold my beer moment and he dove in and maintained the pro you know so he can maintain the process and have hands directly have hands on to it and that's what I want to do too that's why I love working with him and because I get to get my hands dirty well let me ask you this What's the price point on this cigar? On the home, it's going to be fourteen dollars MSRP because it is going to be a limited edition. Yeah. I am using some special tobacco in it, and I'm only going to make a certain amount of boxes uh, each run. Well, let me tell you, I'm doing uh, for the first half of the year. I'm doing a top ten, so you're too late for that. But at the end of the year, we're doing our cigar talk top twenty. That's going to be in it, brother. <laughs> awesome. That's going to be in it. Wow. Great I mean, you guys go to your shops and let them know that you want dissident cigars at that shop because I'm telling you, this is blowing me away. To me, I don't know exactly what leaves you're using in there, but let's just say that I'm tasting some tobacco that I would thought I would have found in about the $30 price range. Is that what you're, I mean, is that what you're thinking too? <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, I guess um, I don't. Want, I want my cigars to be affordable too. You know, I don't want it. to... I know this one's. This is going to be. This is your the, upper end. That's my upper end, and like I said, I'm only doing limited runs with it. Uh, that's why it's a limited release, um, and it'll it's going to resurface uh, periodically throughout you know these, in the years to come. Um, my other cigars, you know, soapbox and block. I'm using certain tobaccos in there as well too. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm using Oma Tempe and soapbox. Um, it's a tobacco that I hate. <laughs> Uh, All right, on its explain own. Explain on that. All right. Uh, on its own, the flavor it, it's uh, it's very metallicy. It, it, it's a very unique tobacco, and if you don't do it right, it can overwhelm a cigar and uh, dominate uh, flavor. But if you use it right, if you if you blend it right, it can it adds some awesome nuances. So if you mesh it with something else, it like has that just certain little ting at the top. Exactly. Gotcha. And I, I wanted to use that, and I used the uh, Brazilian Modafina as the wrapper on the soapbox and block. One tobacco I really love is Dominican Piloto. It gives this saltiness uh, that you don't really get too much off of other tobacco. Yeah, so you I know, I don't get that salty flavor, but every once in a while I'll get it, and I'll be like, where does that come from? So that's where that comes from. Yes, sir. So I, so I use that in, uh, in Block, which I'm really proud of. That says Ecuadorian Maduro wrapper on it and Nicaraguan uh, filler with, with Dominican Piloto. And uh, home, uh, the filler is 100% Esteli tobacco. Um, I really love Esteli tobacco. I love the dark fruit cherryness that it gives off and that little bit and that spice quality that it has uh it's one of the first tobaccos i smoked when i went down years ago to esteli uh to obeya negra and i just i've always loved that tobacco and i wanted to highlight that in home specifically um because whenever i think about that word when i think about what that means it always takes me back to that first time i went nice so how many times you been down there oh man i'm kind of losing count now um more than five Right around there, yeah, okay. and I'll be going down, you know, going down quite frequently, uh, more often now. Um, so, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? I am thirty-three. Very nice, man. Very nice. I love seeing a, the the new generation coming into cigars because you know cigars. I went back and watched some cigar commercials from the sixties and seventies, and man, cigars have evolved so much from that time period and if you go back even to the 80s and 90s cigars have evolved so i mean the younger generations are just going to bring so much more to the table over time because you guys have a fresh perspective and there's a lot of young guys going you know what this isn't the only way to do it exactly i think that's i think that's what the industry needs to start looking at is the next generation um because as I've seen working retail in the past and, and being a rep for these many years and going out and talking to a lot of these guys, these new guys that are coming in the industry, they know what quality is. They, they, they came up and, and they have a whole, they have, you know, they have so many, whether it's craft beer, you know, they're looking for great craft beer, they're looking for great wines. Their palates are really coming developed and they're not afraid to spend that $14 on something that they know is going to be worth it. Oh, um, dude, this is a $14 cigar value. This isn't like 14 and maybe. I smoked a cigar just probably about three weeks ago that was $14. So disappointed. And, you know, when you spend 14 bucks, you want a good cigar, not an okay cigar. And I smoked this cigar, and I'm not even going to tell everybody what it was. You know what? I will tell everybody what it was. It was the um, new Monte Cristo blended by Placencia. And I love Placencia cigars. I'm not a Monte Cristo fan. It's just me. We all have our own preferences. But because it was blended by Placencia, man, I love a lot of the cigars they do. I bought that cigar and I was like, I never buy Monte Cristo, but I'm going to buy this one. And being the fact that it was a $14 cigar, I was very disappointed. It was a good cigar, but it wasn't a great cigar. So I think if you're going to charge $14, it needs to be a cigar that hits it out of the park. And I think that's what you've got here. And I mean, I'm not even, I haven't even finished the first third. I'm amazed. I really am. Thank you. Yeah, we put a lot of time and effort into thinking about these cigars. And I'm really, I'm really excited about them. I know, you know, I hand, handed out some samples to some people just to get their feedback on them. And everything's been Is everybody you've been just blown away? Yeah, they've, they've and I'm, I'm humbled, uh, truly humbled by it. Um, but I think it's. I'm, I'm proud of it. I, I think it's going to be a hit. And You I'm, should be proud. You should be proud. I mean, I can tell it's very well constructed. Blending, dude, you knocked it out of the park. Well, thank you. I've been smoking James's tobacco for years now that he has out of Ovea Negra. And the team that they have down there, you know, James has a very developed palate from being a sommelier for a numerous amount of years. So 
you know, he's really focused on flavors. Um, our, the foreman down there, Leva, has been in tobacco since he was a kid. You know, he knows tobacco like the back of his hand and just using their knowledge and, and, and their know-how and guided me through this process and still, you know, it, it's, it's been tremendous. So let me ask you this. When are these available? They will, uh, I'll, we'll be taking orders at the trade show uh, for retailers and they'll be shipping soon after the trade show. Uh, across the United States. Okay, because I'm going to be getting a box of those, brother. <laughs> awesome. Are they coming in boxes of 10 or 20? Uh, they're going to be coming in a box of 20. Very nice. Very nice. Cool. So you're heading to the trade show. Yes, sir. And have you been to the trade show before? Many, many times. Nice. So <laughs> when you're not at the trade show, are you always just deadbeat tired? Or do you stay up partying with all the other guys? Um, I don't say it too late. Uh, you know, it, it depends on uh, what we got going on, what we got scheduled. Um, but yeah, after, after we hit the floor, you know, we always usually go out to get something to eat, have a couple of drinks and go meet up with some other people, uh, some other, uh, retailers and, and other industry people and talk and chat and, you and know, I imagine have a good time. you get to run into people you haven't seen in a long time oh, yeah, and yeah, you get to great. hang out. Yeah. That's what's one thing that's great about the show is it's a place where everybody can come together, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's great networking for especially new shops that are, you know, getting their, their feel a little bit in the industry. Uh, there's a lot of experience to, you know, to and brains to pick. So, you know, if, if you get a chance to, I highly recommend it. Um, I know some people have some questions about where the future of it's going to go. But, you know, I, I'm one of those people that believe that this industry does need a trade show. And um, Oh, absolutely. I agree 100 percent. And who knows which way that direction is going, but it still needs to exist. You know what I mean? So what about average Joe that wants to go to Vegas and check it out? Do, can they get in? Can they see anything? Or are they just going to be sitting out in the lobby smoking cigars? Yeah, as of right now, uh, the trade show is only for um, retailers and manufacturers. Now, there's talk uh, recently that they have just released some news that they're going to be changing the name of the IPCPR, the organization, to uh, the Premium Cigar Association. And uh, next year, there's talks about having a consumer day. Um, which has caused some stir in the industry if people have been watching and listening. Um, but I, you know, I'm, again, I'm one of those people that I be, this is a consumer driven market. Absolutely. Um, you can't get in now. Um, but next year I look forward to it. Uh, you know, the, especially the ones that are going to go out to this thing, they're going to be diehard fans. And these, those are the guys that grow the industry and grow the brands. And I would love to sit down with them in my booth and smoke a cigar and talk about it. You yeah. Know? Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, uh, I know a lot of diehards. Because a lot of diehards get into blogging, they get into YouTube, they get into podcasts, and we're not creating cigars, but we're smoking a shitload of them. And so, I mean, the opportunity to go up to the show would be a great thing for your average Joe cigar smoker that's just diehard smoker. You know what I mean? And it's not even so much that they want to go up there and smoke their brains out. It's that they get to meet the people of the organizations. That's one of the things that we do on the show, just like having you on the show. We like introducing the consumer to you guys because a lot of times they don't have that opportunity to meet you guys. So I think that's a great idea having consumers a, a, a consumer day at the show. Yeah, I just want to. I think a lot of people are just weary about how the organization is going to roll it out. You know, um, because there's costs that are involved with manufacturers and retailers. To come out there and you know a lot of them come out here to do business so you, you've got to find out they they got to articulate uh to the manufacturers and retailers what that roi you know justify it you know right um and but i think it can be done i think it should be done you know and i'm, I'm just like anybody else I'm, I'm sitting here in anticipation to see what that what, what that's going to look like i hope they do it right you know I, I'm, I'm i'm trying to have some confidence that they well, are you know. and being the first year maybe they don't get it just right but maybe the second year, the third year, they nail it. You know what I mean? Every time you make change, there's going to be some growing pains. But in the long run, and that's what we should be looking at, exactly. is how it can benefit the industry. That's exactly it. Because I mean, this, this industry is under a big, huge magnifying glass by the federal government with FDA right. regulations. And this can bring more awareness uh, to that cause a little bit. And hopefully we can kind of reverse some of these things that are in motion that, are, that, are, uh, that could hinder this, the growth of this industry. Right. And I think the best way to do that is the consumer. The consumer is what drives this, this industry and keeps it alive. Well, I preach every week on my show, join cigar rights of America and write your Senator and your Congressperson, because if we all stand up together, it helps preserve our 
common lifestyle. Exactly. And so, and I think that would be a great part of the show that consumers can go to is, you know, you got a booth set up for Cigar Rights of America and other organizations that promote preserving this community. And so I think it'd be a win-win for everyone. Yeah, and I would like to see uh, the organization kind of maybe give some seminars to consumers on these kind of topics, too, and give them some tools and some education on some of these things. Because there are a lot of consumers out there that don't know. They are, they're not they're not privy to some of this information. But we can give a platform, I think, at the show to kind of highlight those topics and educate them as yeah. well. Um, I think that – I really hope they do something like that. I think that would be hugely beneficial for us. Okay. Hey, so – Let's go back on your history a little bit. You've been working with the Black Label Cigar Company for about six years. Yes, sir. And that's pretty close to when they started. Yep. So tell us about the Black Label Cigar Company because I've heard great things about them. I've smoked a couple of their cigars. But how did they get into business? Because you were telling me earlier that they were in the wine review business for a while. Yeah, James... um so James has a background in wine. He was a sommelier for a numerous amount of years. Um, so he has an amazing palate. Yes, very trained palate. Um, and his uh, his wife Angela was in the, in the wine industry as well too. That's how they met. And they decided to travel the world. And, and they have a crazy story, uh, an amazing story. If you ever get a chance, Cigar Press, uh, some months back, did an interview with them, and they they kind of talk a little bit about their background. Awesome. Um, uh, but yeah, James was a cigar smoker for a very long time, and he wanted to do something different. So. He started Black Label Trading Company at the time when they were doing jungle excursions in Central America on their Land Rovers, taking people through oh, wow. the jungle to Central America. And he made a cigar, you know, he made cigars just to give out to his customers. And he thought, I, mean, they, I have something here. So he dove in head first into the industry, not knowing one single person in the industry and created this brand. And then they opened up a factory of Vea Negra soon after where he was started producing his own his own cigars and then uh, launched Blackwork Studios, which is another brand by them um, that, that's more focused uh, on pretty, some pretty unique tobaccos. So if you smoke the NBK, the Killer Bee, the Green Hornet. And then we partnered up with Emilio Cigars, uh, it's owned by Scott Zuka, and we're producing all of their cigars as well now, too, out of our factory. Oh, um, wow. So... So you got your hand in a lot of different cigars. Yes, sir. Uh, Oveo Negro, we at uh, the factory c- create cigars for other brands as well too. The Leaf by James for Island Jim with the Leaf series. Oh, uh, really? I didn't know that. That came out of our factory as well too. Uh, LOD cigars. Um, we produce their cigars as well. Um, we've done numerous shop exclusives. Uh, Governor and First Lady for Governor Cigars and Pipe out in Monroe, Louisiana. Uh, the Florida Caesar for B and B up in Philadelphia, the Catacomb and the Havelina for Underground Cigar Shop here wow. in Fort Worth. So, yeah. see, I didn't know y'all were that extensive. Yeah, we did uh, the Hawaii Lajero for our fields out in Hawaii. Um, so, yeah, we've we've done quite a bit of cigars for uh, a lot of different shops. And well, it sounds like you're far from being just a rep. <laughs> it sounds like you've had hands on with a lot of different things in the cigar industry. And it really shows by the level of detail and quality of this cigar that I'm smoking. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I was a cigar nerd when I first started off, right? You know, just like everybody else, you know, a consumer just wanted to find something to enjoy. And I just really love the process with making cigars and the experience that comes along with it. So if you would have asked me, you know, three years ago if i would be doing you know if you'd start my own brand i'd say you're crazy right but uh you know how life goes you know that you know get an opportunity take it and i did i seized it and i'm looking forward to what the future is going to hold i have more ideas and more things i want to do um, more cigars i want to release out and more projects i want to work on so uh hopefully within the next year we'll see some more of that develop that's awesome man so you were in the marines now, how long was it after you got out of the Marines before you went to work for the cigar shop? It was about a year and a half, two, two about two years okay. after I got out. I started working at the shop. And you um, started smoking cigars in the Marines? Yes, sir. Okay. I, I find that to be a big uh, source of cigar smokers is the military. You know what I mean? It's kind of a natural, uh, almost a rite of passage because you have, I guess, uh, your higher ranking officers and on down that are smoking cigars. So the young guys kind of gravitate that direction. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just a good relaxing experience, right? Like, um, and you can kind of do that anywhere when right. you have a cigar. You know, you can, like I said, we would sit around the smoke pit and smoke cigars and just kind of decompress. You know, yeah. it's a stressful environment, but this gives you that moment to, to forget. Just, yeah, just forget and relax and you can just. 
just get rid of those the struggles for a little bit and those those problems are just so what a great program with like cigar for warriors because how important it is that that you're in one of those stressful environments like you say and you can decompress with a cigar i mean i'm sure some guys deal with it differently not everybody smokes cigars but for the guy smoking cigars i would say that's probably one of the best ways to it's a decompress. great escape yeah it's a great escape yeah because i mean i've seen the guys like come back and just work out like crazy that's not my thing. <laughs> you're going to go to this trade show. You're releasing your cigars. Uh, how long will it be before they're in retail shops? Probably about a month. About a month from yep. then? Okay, cool. And so where would people be able to find your cigars? Uh, we're going to find out. Um, I already have a lot of retailers have already uh, hit us up um, about get, you know sending out appointments and, and scheduling to bring the stuff in. Um, I know B&B up in Philly uh, is Vince's going to be bringing it in uh, underground smokers abbey down in austin mm. um we got the caravan and you know this, there's 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 a there's a long list already yeah, when you say <laughs> smokers abbey we always have to give a shout out to ian and rebecca awesome people great people we love those guys down there in fact i told them we did a show down there and i told them i was like some weekend when i actually have time i just want to go down there and chill out and smoke you know, not not go down there for a show or anything. Just kind of hang out. Yeah, I like going down there from time to time. And I, I tell them when I come in sometimes, like, I'm not here for work. I'm just here to relax and hang out, guys. <laughs> That's how you know it's a great shop is you could go anywhere, but you're going there. Yep. Yeah, we love those guys. Uh, so, anyway, how much further is – you're in Abilene now, and you're going to Las Vegas. You're planning on being there by Wednesday. Yes, sir. So, today's Monday. So where are you going to stay the night tonight? Probably in New Mexico somewhere. I'll just drive until I get tired and pull well, in front of Well, you know the thing about New Mexico is all the cigar shops close at 6 p.m. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I don't know why. We were talking about that just yesterday. and It's like, man, who who swings by before 6? Like here, we stay open till 9, and then on the weekends till 11. So, And I know Smoker's Abbey stays open till midnight. So I was like, man, who's, who's been able to? And it must be the retired community. It goes, hangs out, because they open earlier over there. Yeah. So, but I love New Mexico. I love Santa Fe, and I've heard they got a great shop in Santa Fe, but you got to get there before six. <laughs> so you're probably going to be out of luck. Probably. I think That's it's about right. an eight-hour drive from maybe, here. Maybe on the way back. You there know. you go. So, you know. So what's your route going to be? I'm going to go uh, probably through Albuquerque, and then uh, go on over to Flagstaff, and then from Flagstaff, Arizona, up into Vegas. Oh, nice! And uh, start getting everything set up. Well, Wednesday, you know, unload the unload the vehicle, and Thursday start coming up with the little course of action, and Friday start setting up the booth and getting everything ready. And the gala is Friday night, and then Saturday, trade show floor opens up, and we're ready to do some business. And that's Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and a half day on Tuesday. Oh, okay. So you're going to be just beat. I heard that I've never been to the show, plan on going on next year, but I heard that pretty much you're on your feet just walking up and down, talking to people, and I mean, it's just brutal all day. Yeah, it's, it's, a, busy, it's, a, it's a busy event for sure, especially if you're a retailer because you're walking all over that floor. You know, I know some people, they say like they, they've been walking 10 miles a day. You know, right. Well, Bill, there. you know, old man yeah. Bill that owned the Leaf was telling me he was like, you know, he'd come back after the show and his wife was like, oh, it was nice for you to go on vacation. And he was like, that was no vacation. Yeah, I think that's what, uh, you know, some, some people are like, oh, I'm absolutely great. You're going to Vegas. It's going to be so much fun. It is fun. But, we're, you know, it is work, too. You know, we're there uh, up early and up late and doing what we need you know taking care of our retailers doing what we need to do um but it is a fun experience it, it, it's it's busy it, it, it is exhausting but it's totally worth it yeah well you know when you're passionate about something it's work but it's not work exactly you know what yep. i mean that's how i feel uh i work shoot i work 50 hours a week and then uh come my weekend i do this all the time <laughs> and you know a lot of people are like man i can't wait to be off on the weekend I feel that way too, but not so I can be off, but so I can do this. Yeah, that's what the weekends are for, right? Like to do what, do the, you know, do some other fun things that you like to do. Do what you're passionate about, because yeah. then it's no longer work; it's just fun. Yeah, exactly. So I'm definitely going to be looking for your product. What other products are coming out at the show, uh, as far as your umbrella company? Oh yeah, so we actually have a lot going on at the show. Um, Black Label Training Company is going to be revamping up the core line, so we're going to have new uh, new packaging. Uh, tweaked up the blends a little bit on the core line. So if you're familiar with uh, the Royalty, uh, the Salvation, the Lawless, the Last Rites, 
uh, in our core line. Those are getting revamped up. Um, porcelain, one of our limited edition Connecticut, is going to go on and make its way into core line this year as well, too. Okay. Um, so we'll be showcasing that. Uh, we are going to be doing a special cigar just for IPCPR attendees called the Last Rites Viaticum. Very special cigar. James put a lot of thought and, and time into the development of this. Uh, only going to be available for attendees, that, you know, retailers that come to the show. And then with uh, Emilio, that's getting it's it's a whole new brand. Uh, James has taken over the blending and the marketing and the and the and the branding behind it. So we're going to be showcasing the new AF series for Emilio, the AF one, the AF two. Uh, Suave will be launched at the show as well too, which is a Connecticut. We're going to be taking pre-orders for the new La Musa, which is going to be a limited edition cigar that's going to be coming out for Emilio. And then um, we are, you know, Killer Bee Connecticut's going to be making another return for Black Work Studio oh, as nice. well. So, yeah, we got a lot going on. Yeah, you're going to be a busy man in the upcoming months. <laughs> yes, sir. So the one I smoked from uh, Black Label was the Last Rites. Love that stick. That was a great stick. Uh, I actually uh, had two of them out of uh, TJ's at McGregor's. And uh, just because I'd never smoked them before, I was like, ah, I'll get two of them. Because, you know, you don't want to buy 10 and then be like, oh, these suck. But I was very uh, surprised. Well, I wasn't really surprised. I had high expectations, and you met those expectations. Awesome. Awesome. Because, you know, I would heard so many good things. But, you know, everybody's palate's different. So sometimes when people pump something up and then you get it, you're like, eh, it's all right. But you guys knocked it out of the park with that as well. Yeah, that cigar was the one that started it all. Really. Oh, really? That's the flagship of our core line. It's one of the most popular ones in our line as well, too. Um, it's one of my favorites to go to for me as well. Man, I'm trying to remember right now when the last time I've had a better cigar than this. Wow. Man, I'm telling you. And my guys, all these fans of the, of the show are going to be like, oh, he's just saying that because you're here. No, man. This is really amazing. Thank you. Wow. You don't, I mean, Wow. All right, that's enough about that. I'm not trying to date you. <laughs> anyway, uh, so are you married? I am not. I'm a single guy. All right. Cool, man. So 33 single and just living the dream, working your ass off and living your passion. Exactly. Awesome, man. So let's talk about your ink, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he's got a sleeve on one side. I have a sleeve on one side. Um, I'm going to be working on my, my left sleeve here soon. Um, hopefully sometime after the show I can start working on that. Uh, is there have, any cigar art on your arms? No, no cigar art on my arms. Uh, most of everything, everything on my right arm is an Irish collage. It looks uh, like symbols. the Garden of Eden. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot Because I of, see the snake. No, there's no snake. There's a... Oh, those are birds. Yeah, so what I have in it is I have the Clotta ring, okay. um, which is an Irish ring. It's a symbol. Are you Irish? Um, yes, my, my, I have a lot of family came from uh, Ireland when they immigrated to the United States. And you know, Ian's are yeah, Irish. Yeah. And I'm Irish. Yeah, there we go. Eighty <laughs> percent. So anyway, go ahead. Yeah, so I have the the clotta on my hand, uh, two hands holding the heart with the crown. I have uh, the harp. I have a hat, top hat, and a pipe. And I have the Swans of Lear, which is a, a reference to a folk story in Ireland. Oh, okay. Um, I have the flag of the republic i have the tree of life and i have some irish lilies nice on my right arm and a pot of gold and a lot so of is the same artist do all that work uh but well not originally the lower half i did years ago when i was in the marine corps and then my art our artist left um it's all original piecing but then i went to i found a new guy who went brought new life into that and then added everything from Where my he elbow out of up. He lives in Biloxi, Mississippi, right now. Oh wow! His name is John Pagnum, great artist. Um, he's gonna so be working on my left arm. More ink, you got to go all the way to Mississippi. Well, he comes to Dallas every so often, so I meet him. You know, oh, I can meet okay. him up there. But he's he's a tremendous artist. Um, yeah, it's really nice work, and I talk about it because I had a buddy who had a sleeve, and it was amazing. And his artist was in Colorado. So he actually flew up to Colorado to get it, and he was like, once you find somebody who's good, you go wherever they are. So exactly. you got it nice that he's coming up to Dallas. Yep. And so quality work shows. You know, my hands, I actually got these ones down in Nicaragua. Oh, really? Um, uh, Fabio is an artist down in Nicaragua who's really uh, helping develop the tattoo scene down in Central America. Uh, he's done a lot of James's work as well, too, but he did my hands. So I have uh, a butterfly on my hand. Uh, it's a homage to one of my favorite books, uh, Papillon, 
Oh, yeah. Um, so I have that. And then I have uh, in French, sans spa on my knuckles, uh, which means without peace. It just goes into a philosophy I have about life. Okay. Yeah. Well, what's that philosophy? That ph- the philosophy is, is life is not peaceful. It shouldn't be peaceful. Um, it is going to be, it's naturally chaotic. It's, it's, it's natural. Challenging. It's challenging, but it's beautiful. So uh, I think people have this, it's just me. I think, you know, the, the, I, the word peace has some false perceptions to it. I don't think we necessarily always need peace because if well, if you're if you're always at peace, it means you're not doing anything. Exactly. So like, embrace that chaos, embrace those challenges, and and meet them, and and, and be successful, and be exactly. So yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot because that's you know it goes into my whole outlook on you know I do all this job, and then I come back over here and do all this job, and it's just chaos almost every day. Yep. And. It's like when I'm really hitting on all cylinders and thriving, man, it's just like I'm at a batter's box, just knocking one out of the park after the next. Yep. And then some days I feel like I'm getting hit in the face with that baseball every day. You know what I mean? (laughs) It's it's, it's the human experience, right? Yeah. So, and the thing about it is though, on the days you're not kicking ass, those are the days that you're taking notes and learning how to deal with those. Yep. So if you do that, then the next day when you get those pitches, you know how to hit them. Exactly. You know, that that's life, right? I mean, you know, exactly. That's that's why I got it. You know, it's just a reminder to me, like I said, to, to, to embrace those challenges that come your way and uh, get back up and, and learn from those mistakes and keep thriving. Forward. Well, I like that, man. I never thought about that before, but that's a great philosophy. I like it. So, uh, man, we just want to say, I guess we'll wrap it up. I just want to say thank you so much for stopping here in Abilene, coming over to the studio and doing the show. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing what you do man i mean you give me this one cigar now i'm just like i gotta smoke them all so <laughs> well thank you very much for having me it was, it was a great honor and i appreciate the time that you given to me to come and talk oh, a little man. bit about it if you guys want to find out more uh on this episode you go to the link and i'll provide the link to your website and then i'll also uh, post a picture and uh, put your link to instagram uh how's the best way that people can reach you and uh social inter- media yeah social media is a good way uh, i'm i'm always on uh facebook or or instagram uh instagram you can find me at uh b l k s h p underscore ben so um, it's black sheep ben black sheep ben um and then uh facebook just look me up benjamin holt and i'll be there um uh we have a new website that was just launched uh for all the brands called ovea negra brands the website is ovea negra cigars.com nobody knows how to spell that yeah o <laughs> yeah o-v-e J-A-N-E-G-R-A brands.com, uh, cigars.com, and it has all the brands on there. So if you're listening to this, you'll hit repeat the last 15 yeah. seconds yeah. like three times. So, But anyway, I checked out their website before Ben got on the show, and man, y'all knocked it out of the park on that too. Made me... I looked at the website and I was like, man, now my website looks like crap. We have a really good guy that developed it for us. His name is Zach. He's, he lives in L.A., and he's a, he's a cigar smoker and a big fan of us as well too, and he did a tremendous job on that website. It looks nice. Man, mate, when I looked at it, I was like, man, my site looks so plain Jane. Yours is nice. So anyway. yeah, We want to give uh, give all the information that we can so uh, you know people better understand what we're about. Yeah, and I love it that you have uh, links for like merchandise. Yep. But you also have a link for retailers so that the consumer knows where to go and your retailers know where to go. I think that's a huge thing that I don't see on a lot of sites. And so job well done there. Thank you. And thank Zach for that. (laughs) Well, Zach, you did a great job. All right, man. Well, I appreciate we'll wrap it up and uh, we'll come right back with our uh, sponsors and next week's show information. And biggest of all, this week's lucky winner for the Luxury Cigar Club. Y'all take care. We'll be right back. Hey guys, we want to make sure uh, you know our sponsor is McAuliffe Cigars. Uh, We're a big fan, so we feel blessed to have them uh, sponsoring our show. And if you haven't become a McAuliffe ambassador yet, you definitely got to go by and check that out. It's free. They send you a handwritten certificate and they send you a challenge coin with your own number on it. So each coin is specifically for each individual person. It's a great program. They really take care of their people and they make great cigars. Uh, as you know, before uh, we got started at the beginning of the show, Bryant was smoking a Medallia and I was smoking the Leanda number two, two great cigars. And I actually haven't smoked all their cigars quite yet, but I'm making my way down the list. And so far, the Medallia is my favorite, but 
I know there's some pretty special cigars that I haven't smoked yet, so I'll let you know as I make my way through the list. Anyway, guys, go by the website there on this page for this episode. Click on the link. takes you straight to the Ambassador Program. Go by there, check it out, and uh, register so you can get your certificate and your Ambassador coin. Uh, while you guys were away and I was doing an interview with Ben, uh, Bryant had to leave. Uh, his wife called him home for dinner, and if you've seen Bryant, you know he's not missing dinner. Anyway, we've got a special guest with us that's going to replace him today. We've got San Diego Jack. How you doing today, Mr. Jack? What's going on, Rob? Good to be here. Good, man. So let's talk for a minute uh, about a little history between me and you. We used to talk back and forth a little bit back when you were in San Diego. And now, I guess what? You've been here for about almost three weeks? Almost three weeks, yeah. So almost three weeks. And uh, I mean, I didn't even know you were moving here. So, you, you know, you sent me a message and said, hey, man, I may be in Abilene. We'll hook up and smoke cigars. And then next thing I know, bam, you're here. And so then you moved here, which was, I mean, you really didn't plan on moving here right away, right? That's correct. So, I mean, it just kind of happened suddenly fast. And so, shoot, man, since he's been living in Abilene, I think I've seen him like 50 times at the cigar (laughs) shop. So he smokes a lot of the same cigars I do. He smokes a lot of different cigars. So tell us about how you got started smoking cigars. Well, uh, I have a neighbor, uh, one of my neighbors I've been living next to for 14 years. His name is Tim Burns. And uh, he actually got me into golf. And when we would go golf, he uh, always carried, you know, his little travel pack and take out a stick. He's a Romeo and Juliet, this, that. And um, at first I wasn't huge on it. Um, and it was never a smoker, never did cigarettes or anything like that. Um, and then, you know, so much golfing with him, um, it just became a habit of trying something different and just enjoyed it. It was relaxing. And um, I wouldn't say I love the buzz, but. It got me. It got me interested more. We golf. We smoke. We golf. We smoke, and it just became, you know, a habit of uh, every time I went to golf, I started smoking and I started paying attention to what he smoked. And next thing you know, it, you know, I just fell in love with it. And nice. So, do you remember what your first cigar was when you went out to play golf by chance? I do not. I know it was uh, um, a Romeo and Juliet. Ah, see, that's what I was going to say, because a lot of times when people first start smoking, it's, man, so many times I hear Romeo, Julieta, uh, maybe it was a Monte Cristo, right. you know, and now look at what you're smoking. Exactly. You're, you're <laughs> like moved on past that. Oh, yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with those cigars, but as you've explored your cigar palette, let's say, uh, you've really expanded your horizons. Exactly, exactly. Uh, you know, when now thinking about it, I think it was just, he knew that I wasn't a great, a good smoker, so he was giving me, you know, that one stick that has been sitting in his humidor, you know, his humidor for a while. Right. So thinking back at it, but see, uh, and I thought you were going to say he knew I wasn't a good golfer. Right, <laughs> that too, that too, for sure. Uh, so, do you still play golf? I do, I do. Nice. When I can get around to it, break away from work. Um, you brought your weather's. Did great. you bring your golf clubs with you? Always in the back of my nice. truck. Always in the back of my well, truck. Well, we'll have to go do that. And I haven't played golf at least in three years i used to actually only go play golf when i was with my brothers and my dad and after my dad passed away we really just haven't been playing golf anymore but man i'd love to get back out on the course and you know hack around some balls and uh drink some beer and smoke Smoking some stoves cigars. man yeah, yeah absolutely same here i would we'll definitely have to do that sometime been a while but definitely you know want to get out there and, and get back into the routine you know work 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 and Whenever there's a chance in some great weather, why not? And let me tell you guys, this dude is a workaholic. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm a workaholic, but this dude is ready to go morning, noon, and night. So, oh, yeah. uh, and tell everybody what you do. Yeah, I remodel homes, interior remodeling. Um, anything that has to do inside of a house, I could pretty much get down with or it. Or outside of the house. Oh, same, same. Because he, he, he was telling me just yesterday he was doing a new carport for a ranch house out in uh, Tuscola, Texas. Yes, sir. Yes, awesome, sir. man. So, and plus, let me tell you a funny story. He was telling us about the difference between working in California and working in Texas. <laughs> and I think it was maybe installing some lights or a ceiling fan. And this will tell you how Texans are. He was like uh, changing out ceiling fan. And he's like, 
there's no ground wire here. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, because, you know, with Texans, we, we're like, so this is the positive and this is the negative. That's all you'd need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't need a third wire. What justice does that do? That scared me a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So if you move to Texas, you'll see we do things a little different around here. <laughs> so you've been here for about three weeks, man. How are you liking it so far? Loving it. I went uh uh, made the jump and came out of Texas if I wasn't absolutely loving it. Um, That's awesome, man. So how long before you think you'll uh, get your uh, wife and kiddos over here? So I already got plane tickets. I'm flying back uh, July 5th. Okay. Um, she's picking me up at the airport, pack up, and she'll be driving back no down here way. by the 7th. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So is your wife at home packing up? Oh, uh, she's going crazy. She's calling me she's every like, day. Where I'm ready. in the hell Come are on, you? Hurry up. you? I'm know? having to pack this whole house up by myself. Exactly. Exactly. So. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny that you say that because uh, back in 2002, I took a job down in Galveston. And my wife and kids stayed behind while I kind of got everything uh, squared away. And so I was down there for like six months before my wife and kids moved down there. Right. And so when it was time to move, I came back home and my wife had done all the work. <laughs> and I mean... Part of me was like, oh, thank, oh, thank God. God. And the other part of me was like, man, she's going to be kind of pissed. pissed. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So anyway, tell me about how you became San Diego Jack. Because that's his name is Junior. So I don't really know why he's called San Diego Jack. So lay that on us. All right. So uh, born and raised in San Diego, uh, Chula Vista. And uh, my name, my real name is Joaquin like Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people get that. They can never pronounce it when they see it. But so growing up, I never liked that name because of Joaquin Phoenix. No, oh, not I thought just you were that. Say you didn't like being, you know, the <laughs> no, he's a great Joaquin actor, great Phoenix actor. Jr. No. Uh, you get, you know, all the phone calls where people are trying to pronounce your name and they can, they see it, they call you by your last name. And it wasn't until um, when I was a younger, I was a little knucklehead in, in middle school and I was always in uh, detention, and uh, it just that so happens. That surprises me. That surprises me because you're like you this learn, rules you learn when guy. You're young. Yeah, exactly. Um, it wasn't until the detention teacher one time after I don't know how many times of being in there, he said, "You know what? It surprises me. We got the same name and we're completely opposite." And I was like, "What are you talking about? Your name is Jack. My name is Joaquin." He's like, "Exactly." Like Joaquin in English is Jack, just like Carlos is Charlie. Really? And I said, really? And it just stuck. You know, I, I started telling people, like, no, you know what? I don't like Joaquin. Call me Jack. And I'm around the neighborhood and, and See, my cousins. I and would be the opposite. If my name was Joaquin, that would be so freaking cool, man. Because that <laughs> is that like a, a rare name. Yeah, I get that a lot. Yeah. See, you yeah. didn't know how cool it was <laughs> when you had it. And now that it's gone, you're like, eh, right. too late. Right. So in, in once I, uh, you know, born and raised in San Diego and once I moved up to Temecula, um, it kind of was just made more sense to stick with the Jack. And then everyone in school, once I moved over here, I always wore Charger jerseys. I have a jersey from the San Diego Chargers for every day of the month. And it's for every day of the month, every holy day cow. Of the month. So do you have a separate closet just for I the do. I, oh. I do. You could ask my wife. It's downstairs. Wow. It's separate. And. Anytime, you know, throw one on, it's right there, good to go. And then uh, uh, it just so happened that at school, it just kind of stuck, you know, being San Diego Jack because people wouldn't know my name. So they just call me San Diego, San Diego, San Diego. <laughs> and I just put the two to two together and it's, it's been. So do you have any of the uh, Chargers jerseys? with your name on the back i do and do you have any of them that says joaquin no oh none of them. man La you gotta have name one <laughs> you gotta have one that says joaquin yeah. that would be cool no. how do you spell joaquin it's j-o-a-q-u-i-n okay so when you get those phone calls you get a lot of joe quinn jock Juan. what is I, how let do me, you say it <laughs> let me tell you this and you'll never get away from that because my last name is jones do you know how many times i get phone calls and i get this can I speak to Mr. Jones? No and I'm way. like, oh, dude, this is Jones. If you don't know how to say Jones, Jones. <laughs> you should go back to school. So right. I can imagine with that name that you got all kinds all of mess to ups. this day, till this day, I get the same phone calls. So, um, and then the junior, I know you guys, they call me junior because in my family, I am a junior. My dad is the same name. So, oh, really? um, you know, around work and everywhere else, everyone knows me as junior, especially, uh, when I joined the union right out of high school. Um, 
you know, can I have two Joaquins? They used to call us the, the Bernal brothers. Uh, <laughs> uh, but every time, you know, the boss wanted to get to me or talk to me, it was always Junior, get over here, Junior, Junior, well, Junior. You. So that stuck to. Yeah, he kind of separated you guys apart. Exactly. <laughs> so it's time for the Luxury Cigar Club giveaway. And uh, we just want to give props to those guys over at Luxury Cigar Club. And you're a member, right? Yes, I am. So how long have you been a member? Uh, I believe four months now. Dude, is it like every month is oh Christmas? Oh, my God. I love it. I can't wait. I'm always on there looking what date, how much longer. I know. And when they start shipping them out, if I see somebody else get a box before I get a box, I'm like, Spoiler hey, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I won't look. I don't want to see <laughs> exactly. what's coming. I've done the same Because thing. it's like Christmas. And it's like I tell Brian all the time. What I love about it is usually... In fact, only one of the cigars that I've gotten in the box could I get at my local shop. So it's so cool to get all these different cigars that oh, yeah. I never see. And they do such an awesome job at picking cigars because every one that I've gotten, I've been like, holy crap, this is good. And, I, and some of them oh, I've yes. never even heard of. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And so those guys are doing a great job over there. So since we got... San Diego Jack with us here in the studio. We're going to let him give this week's winner announcement. So uh, who's our lucky winner this week? Israel Alquiciar from Lake Dallas. So I'm going to repeat that. It's Israel. Say it one more time. Alquiciar. Oh, see, I can't roll my R's <laughs> I, with an R name and I can't roll my R's. So I'll let you say it again. Israel Alquiciar. And he is from Lake Dallas. So we'll be getting. Congrats. Yeah, congrats to you, brother. I know you're going to love the Luxury Cigar Club because I have never met anyone who doesn't. And, you know, I've met some people Agreed. who maybe didn't know about it because they're new in the cigars, but everybody else. Man, they love all the cigars they come out with. So uh, anyway, I'll be shooting uh, Israel an email with his uh, product code. Israel, go by and sign up for the Platinum Club. Put in the code and they'll send you a free box. Uh, we just want to say thank you to all the guys over at Luxury Cigar Clubs for being partnered up with us on our weekly giveaway. Uh, we just couldn't be happier to have them part of our show. And uh, so anyway, guys, uh, we had... About five or six guys send us emails saying that they wanted to support the show through a Patreon. And to be honest with you, I didn't know what a Patreon was because, you know, I'm old and I'm not real tech savvy. But anyway, so we looked into it and we wasn't real sure if we wanted to do that or not. And then we got a few more requests. So what we did is we went ahead and put a link on the website. So if you go to our episodes page on the website, and that's www.cigartalkpodcast.com. Down at the very bottom, there's a place where you can join the Patreon, support the show. And uh, we decided to do three different levels. Uh, it's like $1.99 if you just want to support the show, and we're much appreciated. And then if you want to go up to the next level and join the Light em Up crew, we're actually going to send out uh, the uh, logo poker chip. And on one side, it has our logo, of course. And then on the other side, it has the Light em Up crew. And so if you guys want to join the Light em Up crew, you can do that at the next level and then the top level you'll still get the uh, poker chip with our logo and our uh, light em up crew on the back but we're also going to have you on the show uh, find out what you like about cigar talk find out what you're smoking find out what cigar lounges you go to how you got into cigar smoking and what you love about the community so uh, if you guys want to do that great and if you just want to listen and not worry about it man we're totally appreciative of whichever way you decide to support the show and so lastly, let's talk about what's coming up next week. We have Brian from Cigar Obsession. He is like the, uh, what would you call, consumer reports of cigars. And what I mean by that is he does reviews on cigars. He does reviews on cutters and lighters and anything to do with cigars. He covers it. So if you want to find out something about cigars or say, you know, you want to look at a new cutter or lighter, you go by his website. Uh, he has a YouTube channel and he also has a website and he does reviews on just about everything. So we're really looking forward to having him on the show. And then uh, I guess that about wraps it up. So, man, we just want to say thank you, uh, San Diego Jack, for coming over and filling in for Brian. Thank you for having me. I, I, you know, I figure by now he's probably done about eating. So maybe he'll come back by later and he can smoke <laughs> with us. 
But uh, anyway, Jack, we appreciate you coming by, hanging out. And uh, you guys, thank you so much for listening. We really do appreciate it. And if you have any uh, requests that you want us to do on the show, send them our way on emails. We'll be happy to take a look at it and see what we can do to provide whatever uh, things you guys want to hear on the show. And then uh, I guess there was one other thing I wanted to talk about real quick. Oh, if you haven't signed up for the Luxury Cigar Club giveaway, go by our website and click on the registration. All you have to do is give your name and email address, and we uh, randomly select a winner each week, and you too can be a winner of the Luxury Cigar Club box. So anyway, guys, y'all have a great week, and stay smoking, my friend.